Hi, this is Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. We are God's remnant at God's Church of Love online, Saturdays and Tuesdays. Join us whenever you feel led. Now, we are dealing with how things happen in our lives. And we're dealing with the wilderness wanderings, the battles we fight. The battles, the wars, the struggles, the, the challenges. And we wonder why some things seem to come to a loss and why some things help us get the victory. What is it that helps us get the victory? What is it that makes us suffer loss? What is it that makes us fail? Okay, so what I want to share with you is that God teaches us through the wilderness wanderings. If you have the time, or can make the time to read the book of Deuteronomy. It's an excellent lesson on some of the wars and some of the battles that were won and lost. Read Joshua chapter 7, Joshua chapter 8. Those will tell you how we go from defeat to victory and why the defeat took place. Now, I'm going to do a quick overview without reading a lot of scripture, because I know I tend to wear people out with scripture. Sorry, I love it. I think the word is wonderful. But for the sake of time, I'm afraid this word might be long. So let's dive into a quick synopsis. When you look at the wilderness wanderings, there are times, and you look at when God told him to go in and possess the land, Moses died, Joshua rose up and took Moses's place. He was appointed by God. Now, this is what happens. And I want to read Joshua's promise from God to us. Take this personally. I'm going to read it. And then we're going to tap into a little bit of Joshua chapter 7. Okay. So let's go to Joshua chapter 1 first. Now, Joshua chapter 1, I love this. God led me to this years ago when he had me open up my first hair salon. And this was the word. <clears throat> now, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun. Moses minister saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan and all this people unto the land which I do give them, even to the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you. As I said unto Moses, this is a precious promise. Keep this in your heart. As I said unto Moses, from the wilderness and this Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river Euphrates, and all the land of the Hittites, and unto the great sea toward the going down of the sun, shall be your coast. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so will I be with you. That is a heck of a promise right there. Mm. I will not fail thee nor forsake thee. Be strong and of good courage. Let me repeat that. Be strong and of good courage. For unto this people shall thou divide for an inheritance the land which I swear unto their fathers to give them. Only be thou strong and very courageous that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law, which Moses, my servant, commanded thee, turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper 
whithersoever thou goest. Mm, it's conditional. Did you hear the condition? Don't turn from it. All right. Wow. Listen to this. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Mm. Wow, have not I commanded thee, be strong and of good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee whithersoever thou goest. Amen. Stop it right there. That I finished at verse 9. Now, this is what I want to share with you. Why is it that some of God's people suffered loss after getting a promise like that? Why is it that some of us suffer loss after a promise like that is given? Now, we are going to go over to the book of Numbers. Numbers 22. Now, in Numbers 22, if I can get myself in the right place here, I'm all over the place. Numbers 22, this is what got me <clears throat> when I was reading this. Now, in Numbers 22, you've got the children of Israel pitching over here, pitching over there, and Moab and all these guys. And this one king was afraid of the Israelites. So he called for, um, what is this man's name? Balaam. Yeah. Okay. Now, listen to this. I'm going to name a few things that cause us to fail. A few things that cause us to suffer this defeat and loss. Number one, covetousness. Number two, fear. Number three, disobedience. Hmm. Let's stop there. If the Lord takes us further in, we will. I believe number four might be lust. All right. Now, <laughs> now let's talk about it. Let's just talk. We've got Balaam. He is called by the enemy, called on by the enemy's king to come and curse the children of Israel. When he comes to curse the children of Israel, God says, no, you don't go with these people. You bless them. You, you are not to curse what I have blessed. Now, he gets another call, a second call. He obeys God. He, he lets them know, no, I can't curse what God has blessed. But then he gets another one. This is a more intriguing, inviting, enticing invitation. And this begins to feed into his covetousness because he is being promised in verse 17, Numbers 22, verse 17, the king is saying, for I will promote thee unto very great honor. I will do whatso, I will, uh, let me read it again. And I will do whatsoever thou sayest unto me. Come therefore, I pray thee, curse me these people. Now, he answered him and said he couldn't, but when he took it to the Lord, he told him, spend the night and let me go to the Lord and consult with him. Now, he already got his answer. There are times when you already got your answer, but because the promises of man is so enticing, it feeds into your little delicate desires that it makes it easy for you to almost want to give in to temptation and do the very thing you know God doesn't want you to do. So as a result, he's coveting. <clears throat> he, he did what God said, but he's coveting. So he goes to God with a heart full of covetousness. And God's anger was kindled. 
He tells them, go on. Go on with the people of Mar. That's right. Go on with them. And I'll tell you what to do. So he goes. And because he went, the anger of God was kindled because God knew his going was not out of obedience to him. His going was out of the covetousness of all the goodies that he could get. Now, God gets him on, this man is riding a donkey. The Bible refers to the donkey as an ass. Now, God sends an angel in the way and the donkey stops. The donkey mashes up against the wall. He, he goes through changes three times. And each time Balaam is angry at the donkey and beats him because he's, he's putting him in danger and he won't go the way he wants him to go. So God opens the mouth of the donkey. Listen to this. When he opens the mouth of the donkey, he tells him, he says, why are you beating me like this? You know, I'm, I'm just your servant. Why are you beating me? And, and, and he said, if I had a sword, I would thrust it and kill you with it. Now, this is God speaking through the donkey, right? As if he's the donkey. He says, because <clears throat> of your disobedience that's in your heart, right? He, he chastises him. And then, check this out. The Lord opens Balaam's eyes and he sees an angel, the angel of the Lord standing with the sword drawn. Each time the donkey halted, that was the reason because he saw the angel. Balaam did not. Now, listen to this. A lot of you go through life. Oh, I hope you're hearing this. A lot of you go through life wondering why you run into obstacle after obstacle after obstacle after obstacle after obstacle. There are two reasons for obstacles. One, you're going the wrong way for the wrong reason. Maybe three reasons. Two, you're going the right way for the wrong reason. And the timing is off. And three, it's not in God's purpose at all. Now, there are times, this is the exception to that rule. There are times when you're right smack dab in the middle of, of God's will. God told you to do this and do that. You're doing it. And Satan wants to thwart God's plan. Satan is always trying to curse what God has blessed. But God always gets the upper hand because God is the head man in charge. He's the one that calls all the shots. So no matter what Satan throws your way, no matter what hurdles, what walls, what obstacles he places in your pathway, what God has for you is for you. And that's what you have to take to the bank. When you know you're in the center of God's will, no matter what happens, you know God's on your side. And it's not going... No weapon formed against you will prosper at that point. Now, another reason that a lot of people miss out, there are problems in our lives. We run into obstacles. We run into problems. And bam, we have a conflict and we lose. We end up losing that battle. Hmm. Why do we lose the battle? Well... Let's tip on over here to Joshua chapter 7 and check out why we lose the battle. Now, <clears throat> it starts the very first verse. What does it say? But the children of Israel committed a trespass in the accursed thing. For Achan, the son of Carmi, the son of Zabdi, the son of Zerah, the, the tribe of Judah, took of the accursed thing. The anger of the Lord was kindled against the children of Israel. And Joshua sent men from Jericho to Ai. Now, check this out. He's sending his soldiers to go fight the battle of Ai. But he has no idea because it's not the whole group that's committing the sin. It is one individual whose family is dumb enough to cover up his sin. 
So that's everybody in his household. So what happens, what happens is, all right, they end up going to battle, the, the, you know, the soldiers, and they presumptuously and pridefully say, well, we don't need all these. We can just take a couple of thousand. We're good to go. Right? So I think he says, what, 3,000, something like that. I, the number may be wrong. But anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm summarizing for the sake of time because I got a lot of scripture and I know I don't have time to read all of it. So here we go. They go to this battle. And boy, I mean, it's like, I think it's 60 men or something like that got killed and hurt. They turn tail and run from the the, ba the battle of Ai. And they wonder well, what happened. God promised us. God promised us that we would win. He promised us victory. He would not fail us. Hello. He would not forsake us. Be of good courage. Well, they were doing what they were told. But they had no idea that sin was in the camp. Hmm. Some of you have no idea there's sin in your life, sin in your heart, that you are in a precarious position spiritually. You don't get it. God has to show it to you. He's got to reveal it. So now Joshua, he falls on his face. Oh, how can you let this happen? What are they going to say about your name? And he's just, oh, he's just all over the place with the dramatics. And God looks at him and get up off your face. Why are you lying there on your face like that? Israel has sinned. He didn't say Achan had sinned. He said Israel had sinned. One drop of leaven can leaven the whole bunch, y'all. See, as Christians, we tend to allow little pet sins. We tend to allow little pet habits, little things that we think are not, they're neither here nor there, not a big deal. Uh, I don't think God's going to you know, send me to hell for something like that. Telling that little white lie, snatching that little something, something, calling that person that I know I should not be calling, dabbling into a little uh, tarot card reading or calling the psychic hotline and seeing what they got to say about me and this guy I'm interested in or seeing what they got to say about this business transaction I'm about to pull. You know, we don't think a lot of things that God totally detests. Now, so what ended up happening? They go to war, they lose the war, or they lose that battle, not the war, they lose the battle, like many of us do. And now everybody is befuddled, dumbfounded. They're looking at God like, did he just tell us a lie? Right? Now, what happens in toward the end of that chapter? God tells Joshua, call Achan. He calls his family out. Everybody in that household dies that day. They have gone into the camp, dug up under, and found, because Achan admitted it. He admitted it. See, some of y'all think because you admit something, you're off the hook. Just because you admit it, just because you ask God to forgive you, does not always remove the consequence you've got to pay. Hmm, think about that. King David, King David saw this woman, lusted after her, had a child by her, had her, her husband killed in war, her faithful husband that loved David, right? Put him on the front line so he could die, so he could have this woman as his wife, covetousness and lust, has a baby by her and that, that baby, it died. I mean, he cried, pleaded, begged, all that. Didn't, it didn't make a difference. That baby died. Then he ended up having the son Absalom, and Absalom was his, his biggest enemy. Now, going back to, to the battle of Ai, 
in the battle of Ai, after Achan, after God destroyed Achan and his household, and they removed the accursed thing out of the camp, got rid of it, burnt it, whatever they did. The very next time they went to battle Ai on God's approval, rather than their own presumption, they won the battle just like God promised. You notice when he was uh, admonishing the people in Joshua chapter 1, that every promise was conditional on their obedience. Every promise was conditional on their submission to God's authority. Do you get that? See, I hear Christians all the time talk about some sexual rendezvous or how they cuss somebody out or how they did whatever. And afterwards, you know, they, they, they pray to ask God, you know, have mercy, blah, blah, blah. Cause you know, not necessarily that they were sorry for what they did. See, it's not sorrow that brings repentance. It's godly sorrow that brings repentance. And what is repentance? Repentance is not, oh, don't whip me, mommy. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, no, no. That's not repentance. Repentance is, oh, God, I messed up. Oh, Father, I am so, I hate to disappoint you. And then what does repentance bring? Change. You change your ways. You stop it. You do whatever. You fight tooth and nail to get a handle on that. But you don't casually co-mingle and cohabit with your sins. Your little pet sins. You just don't. It's not, this is not a casual journey. The Bible says the violent take it by force. The kingdom suffers violence and the violent take it by force. Whatever victories you need, baby, you got to scratch and dig to fight for that victory. It's not casual. It's not a casual approach. Okay. So, hang on. So what I want you guys to think about is the different things that can cause us to fall short. Fear. You got fear in your heart. You feel intimidated by people, by what people think about you. Pray against that bad boy. Rebuke it in the name of Jesus. Don't be like Gideon hiding in the wine press, hiding back there all afraid. God had to go into his hiding place to call him to war. God knew he was afraid, so he called him. He spoke it out of his mouth. Almighty man of valor. <laughs> okay. Sometimes God has to speak things into us that we don't have. Now, we can go, the battle's lost because of the lack of faith, which is fear. The battle can be lost because we're not in God's purpose. The battle can be lost because we are covetous. And the battles in our lives can be lost because of pride. We can be so arrogant. The Bible says, don't think more highly of yourself than you ought. You, and this is my take on it. You ain't all that in a bag of chips like you think you are. Number one, the chips are stale. Hmm. Number two, the chips are fragile. Yes. So you are not all that and a bag of chips. So get up off your high horse. Quit patting yourself on the back. Quit smiling in the mirror with your little selfie mindset. Uh, yes, I said selfie mindset. And quit worshiping yourself and turn to the God who knows what you have to do to change. Because as long as you are full of you, some of you are full of it. <clears throat> I won't say what it is, but some of you are full of you. And when you're full of you, hmm, you get too presumptuous on the things of God, on the blessings and the promises of God. 
And God's looking at you like, baby, you're not even in the place where I want to bless you right now. So we have to be very careful about our attitudes, about the way we feel. Yeah, a lot of stuff going on. God knows the heart. He knows the heart. When we don't, he does. Okay. Uh, let's see. Judges. Oh, let me share this with you real quick. Talking about he knows the heart. Let's talk about me. Y'all want to hear my gossip? Mm-hmm. Okay. When I was in my maybe early 30s, something like that, there was a lady in our church that sang. I mean, the woman could sing. Now, I resented her voice. I resented her talent. Why did I resent her talent, do you ask? Because the Lord revealed this to me, something I had no idea of. I was living a holy life. I was faithful in church. I was faithful in prayer, reading my word. I was taking authority and casting out and shutting down and doing all I need to do for the kingdom, for God's sake, in the name of Jesus, and had no clue until the Holy Spirit revealed to me, you are jealous of her. Do you know who was shocked? Moi. My jaw dropped to the ground. How could you say I'm jealous? Just like Joshua. Lord, why? How could you let this happen? Right? But hey, Israel has sinned. Now he's shocked. What? What? Right. Well, I was shocked that there was sin in my heart. Do you have an ear to hear when God wants to correct you? When God wants to tell you, yeah, you're trying. That's good. You're living a holy life. Well and good. But there's something I need to deal with right there. So come on, let's, let's have a powwow. Let's deal with this. Once the Lord showed it, and I asked, really? He replayed all of my thoughts that I had been thinking toward that woman. Your thoughts count. See, you think because you didn't say it, because you didn't act on it. Yeah, you're in like Flynn, baby. Hello. And God is saying, no, your thought life is just as important. See, when the Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks, we could take that a step further. When you see God correcting you for your thoughts, and it can say, out of the abundance of the heart, the mind thinketh. Hmm. So you know what's happening in your heart by what you're thinking. Now, you know what I was thinking about her? Yeah. In case you're going through the same thing and you don't know it, you're not recognizing it for what it is. Look at her. All that drama. She really, really wants to be at a nightclub entertaining boy look at it. all that all that flair and dramatics you might as well have a cake like every night i mean i was oh it was catty it was very ugly no i never said it to another person that was hidden but not to god it was wide open to god now he knows the thoughts and the intents of the heart he goes to the bone and the marrow of the situation. So listen to this. I did not want to suffer with that anymore. I wanted true repentance because I did not want to go through life battling wars that I can't win because I can't get past my jealousy of what other people have that I don't. So I stood up in the church publicly asked her to forgive me for being jealous of her. And I didn't give a fly and you know what, what people thought about me because I knew at that moment I had the victory. God revealed to me and I exposed the crap right out in the light. That way, that mess would be gone. And I wouldn't have to keep going through that over and over and over and over. 
always wondering why they got what I don't have, why she has what I don't have, what he can do, what I can't do. How come they make the money I can't make? How come they, how come, how come, how come? It's not fair. Why, 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 why? What's wrong with me? Am I chopped liver or something? I don't want to go through my life being bitter because of what I didn't have. Instead of being grateful for all that I did have. So, yeah, I expose myself. The Bible says if you expose yourself, God will hide you. Mm -hmm. But if you hide yourself like Achan did, God will expose you. You do not want to be exposed by God. You see what happened to Achan. He didn't just pay through shame and humiliation. He didn't just pay through exposure. He paid with his life and his family's life. All right. Now, those are the issues. We think a lot of times, you know, we have these little white lies and these little pet sins, and we think our little idiosyncrasies, well, I was always like that. Well, that doesn't mean God wants you to always stay that way. All right, let's see here. Another thing, some of us don't get the victory. Now, this gets a little deep, so I hope you can go with me on this. Some of you, your bag of chips is so full. You're so full of yourself. Yeah. You think so wonderfully of you and your walk with the Lord and your accomplishments and your education and your credentials and oh, what a wonderful person, how powerful I am here and how powerful I am there. And people love me. But, 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 there are times when there's a battle to be fought. And if you don't humble yourself at that time, you can lose pitifully. Now, let me share one who humbled himself. Back in the day, I mean, it's still like that now in a lot of countries and even in a lot of individuals in the modern day world. There is a mindset with a lot of men that puts women in a different level. Now, because of that, in their mind, women are limited to a certain degree where men can do whatever they want. Okay, now, in this culture that this man was in, Barak, right? Here he is. He wants to go into war. He wants to go into battle. But he doesn't want to compete with the enemy he doesn't want to confront the enemy without a woman. A woman? Did you say a woman? Oh, no. Now, you get men fussing and climbing the walls about women being ministers, preachers, pastors, whatever, over the men. Oh, oh, oh. But God himself, for those of you who have that issue, placed Deborah above all by making her a judge a judge he appointed her to be one of the judges hello think about that this is before the kings and all that stuff this is before david this is while god's program was still in play and he was appointing judges to head the the nation of israel yeah they were the ones of top authority hello and this was a woman Think about that. So now he appointed a woman over nations, which means if a woman can be over nations, why can't he appoint a woman over a little group? Blue church. Just saying. Now, moving right along to the real point. Here we have Barack, a man at a time when men think so little of women, but this woman is his superior. <laughs> yes, yes. And he wants to win this war. But he goes to her, consults with her because she's not only a judge, she's a prophet. So she hears directly from God. 
and he's consulting with God through her. And she says, yes, you can win the battle. He says, I will not go unless you go with me. And she challenges his manhood and his pride and says, if I go, see, this is the outside of the box type thing. If I go, the credit will go to, here's the cuss word, a woman. Barack said, hey, I'm cool with that. Come on. He could care less. His pride was not in the mix. He knew who God's person was. And that's who he wanted on his side. How many of you are willing to be to lower yourself and allow someone else to take authority over you that you maybe maybe out maybe you have got more education maybe you're more qualified maybe you've got more expertise in certain areas but you know that you know that you know that this person has that something that that certain quality that certain something that will get the job done better than you will with all your accolades and all your accomplishments are you willing to humble yourself and submit under the authority of someone else, yielding your authority over to them in order to win. Hmm. That's that humility. Some battles will never be won in your life until you are willing to humble yourself. Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord and he will lift you up higher and higher, and he will lift you up. Look what happened. They won the battle, didn't they? Oh, yes. And the credit went to a woman, and Barack was fine with it. He enjoyed the victory, and he did not have to be the one with the pin placed on his lapel. He stepped back and let her take the credit, and he was okay with that. What about you? Huh? You got enough vision to get your pride out of the mix? That's why some of y'all can't accomplish the big things you want to accomplish. Because the very person God has placed in your life to help you get it done is the very person you don't want to be bothered with because part of you has a little jealousy because you know they got you know they have an edge on this thing. But you want the credit, don't you? You want your name going down in history. You know, little foxes. It's the little foxes that spoil the vine. What are you doing to short circuit? What are you doing to hinder, delay, slow down, cancel your victory? What are you doing? What's in your heart? What's in your mind? What's in your attitude? Huh? Who are you stifling so that you can get all the glory? You get on these jobs, you run these companies, and you know you've got experts under you. You ever see the movie uh, The Associate with Whoopi Goldberg? And this one woman is highly gifted. Now, Whoopi is highly gifted, and her boss is always taking the credit. She gets none. Right. Now, she ends up, this woman is steadily trying to help her, and she has no idea how truly gifted she is. But when she finally steps back and puts her little pride in the back drawer and pays attention, she and the woman become a great success. Why? Because she realizes this woman's got gifts I can't even touch. And together, with my know-how and her know-how, we can both go way further than me trying to get all the credit and doing it all my way. Now, watch the movie The Associate. That's a good lesson. Good lesson. Now, anyway, so I just want to share. I'm not going to keep going because I can go story after story. What was Samson's problem? Samson's problem was Delilah. Yes, the nookie. Yes, the sweetie pie. 
his lustful desires got his behind in trouble. What did he lose as a result of his lust? He lost his strength, his supernatural God-given strength, and he lost his eyesight, did he not? They gouged out his eyes. Hello. It wasn't until his hair started to grow back that he got his strength back and he got the victory at the end. But look at all that he lost as a result of desire. Right. See? So my, my caution to you, watch your desires, watch your mindset, watch your attitude, handle that pride, <clears throat> hmm. watch that arrogance, guard that jealousy, be honest with yourself and God so that God doesn't have to expose you yeah, you don't want to do that. You don't want to pay a consequence that you don't have to pay. If you get yourself together by God's power because of godly sorrow and true repentance, change, real change, you can avoid a whole lot of pitfalls in life. I'm serious. And the ones you must go through because God is honing you and, and, and making you and shaping you into a weapon in his hand, those will be sweet victories. They may be a little painful here, a little pinch there, a little sting there, a little loss, but it will ultimately end up in your success. Like Joseph, what did Joseph do? He was thrown into prison. He was sold into slavery and ended up in prison because of a lie, right? But he stayed true to God. And because he stayed true to God, God was able to use him through dreams to promote him to the highest level next to the highest person in the whole country, in the whole region. So my question to you is, <laughs> are you willing to get rid of all the stuff Get rid of the accursed thing, the accursed attitudes, the accursed feelings, the accursed uh, actions, the, the little white lies, the little pet sins. Are you willing to get rid of the things that can cause you pain in the long run? Or must you keep that bag of chips? Okay, I'm going to stop there. God bless you. One thing I want to say as a solution to all of this dilemma, pray, seek God's face, get in God's word, know what he requires of you, humble yourself in obedience. You will be blessed. God bless you.